Joey Logano held off a hard-charging Gary Owen in Michigan in an overtime shootout last episode. Logano earned his second victory of the season, and Owen earned his second, second-place finish of the season, coming up short of his first win yet again. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to a brand new episode of NASCAR Heat 3 Career Mode. Today, we have the Cup Race in Sonoma, our first road course race of our Cup career, obviously, just in our rookie season. Hopefully looking for a strong finish, maybe even a chance at a victory. We come straight to our qualifying lap through the final hairpin on the track, currently sitting P5 in just round one as I come through the final bend as we approach the line to cross and set a 112.994 so it wasn't a great lap and I decided to uh, retire from the session there and see if it would get me into the next round and unfortunately it got me P20 so we will start P20 for Sonoma Raceway as we get ready to go racing here. The Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series hits the road today literally for the running of the Toyota Save Mart 350. Sonoma Raceway is the first of three road course events on this year's schedule. This twisting 12-turn, 1.99-mile drive through the heart of wine country is a true test of racing skill. There's over 160 feet of elevation change here, something that isn't obvious when watching on TV. Now, some turns are completely blind, like turns 3 and 3A. And you're almost always on the wheel here, which requires a different mindset after all the oval races. The pace car is coming down pit road. We're ready to go racing on PRN. All right, we are ready to go green in Sonoma Raceway. Daniel Hemrick, the number eight car, sent to the back due to failing technical inspection. Your only driver with some type of issue putting him in the back of the field as we're ready to go road course racing for the first time this season alongside the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. And the green flag is out. We are led to the green from P19 now on the outside of Johnson as we come through the first bend as uh, Clint Boyer and Kevin Harvick battle side by side for the lead. That was actually Kevin Harvick up leading uh, through the first few bends. Now alongside the 48 still as we exit the first bend. A little bit sideways, but no big deal as we come into the left-hander up the hill into the right-hander, which will lead to a little downhill decline into the next 90-degree uh, right turn. Now as we approach the back of the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Through the right-hander, we clear the 95 of Casey Kane for P17 as now we look up to the inside of Stenhouse, making it three wide, going into to the next corner as we clear him out of the right hander as we approach our teammate Jamie McMurray pretty fast I did not expect him to be checking up that much but uh, we go side by side and he is going to go way wide and get into the side of me and cause me to lose the spot to Ricky Stenhouse as we battle side by side through the S's now as we make a little bit of contact coming into the right hander as we try our best to get slowed down in time to allow him to still get the, his line to be ran so we don't screw him up but we do get clear just about as we're going to the last corner a lot of smoke coming from the 18 of Kyle Bush up ahead but he is okay as we clear Stenhouse for P15 finally after a pretty good battle with him throughout uh, most of this first or last half of this first lap as we have completed our first lap of the race with just four to go in stage one now stages are pretty short here obviously but as we approach our teammate, once again, Jamie McMurray, in the one car would get really loose out of the corner, but we were able to get by him there. As you see there, we clear him through the S's to work our way up to P14 now behind 13th place. Ryan Newman, as we have a lot of oversteer out of the corner, just really struggling for grip early on in this race. And I know as the race goes on, our tires are going to wear more and maybe it's going to tighten the uh, car up we'll have to wait and see though as we come into the last hairpin behind ryan newman as we close up on him big time as they completely put just about all four wheels under that yellow line as we have a lot of oversteer out of the last corner but hang on to the car thankfully as we come across the line to complete the second lap and we did get ahead of uh, thir the 31 car of ryan newman with just two to go in the stage so we sit p13 as it stood currently sitting in a pretty solid position uh, considering we started in p20 so we were just trying to set myself up really well for at least stage two i was not expecting to be in a stage paying position or a stage point paying position at the end of stage one and obviously we're three spots out of a uh, points paying position as we cross the line there to take the white flag in stage one kind of overshooting the first few corners of this final lap in the stage and once again a lot of oversteer on the exit of the corner 
corner as we come into the left hander and really nailed the little hill part the second hill part here as we come out of there as we approach the 90 degree right turns uh, two of them to be exact as we try to run down Clint Boyer obviously not enough time to get to him so we're just trying to maintain P13 before the stage ends as Newman lurks in behind me but clearly he's not going to be close enough as we come through the S's for the final time in this uh, uh, stage one and obviously this track is going to be completely changed up I believe next season NASCAR is going to be running the old version of Sonoma so it's going to certainly make things interesting I'm hoping that if it is 2019 we get that then hopefully we get that in the 2019 DLC the newly configured uh, Sonoma so now as we come through the final hairpin though on the exit we're obviously going to hang on to P13 as we crumb, come across the line a little bit of damage on the front end you notice there but we got P13 in stage one so obviously no points but set up pretty well to start stage two to maybe get some points here but no one's pitting and uh, tires did not wear very much so we stayed out as well as Kurt Busch gets a playoff point to his name and now we get ready to start stage two behind 18 right, of Kyle Busch and the green flag is back out alongside Ryan Newman at the 31 he looks on my right rear as we cross the line only five laps once again in this stage as we go over to the right side of the track as soon as we possibly can, making it three wide for a brief moment with Boyer and Kyle Busch as our teammate McMurray got into my left rear and just about hooked me into the grass, but thankfully he backed out of it and we were able to hang on to the car with no problems as we now sit behind the 18 of Kyle Busch who now makes a move to the right side of Boyer and we do as well. Now as we look into the right hander, we get to the right side of Busch. Obviously he's not very happy with us lately as we get into the side of him that probably did not make him happy now as we send it up the inside of Chase Elliott trying to get into a top 10 position out of the right hander we do clear the nine of Elliott and we have entered the top 10 for the first time in this race as we approach the S's behind Daniel Suarez and the Stanley Tools 19 Camry now as he sets P9 a solid run for him currently he has not had the greatest start to the season and likely already in um, a tough position if he didn't have his win obviously he has already won so he's locked into the playoffs as we look to his inside into the final hairpin to take p9 away from him so we're rallying up the field pretty solid uh, at a solid pace on this first lap in stage two as we cross the line to complete the first lap we gain what four positions in lap one now as we look at paul menard and p8 as we try to run him down through the first few corners we certainly close the gap up on him considerably as we exit the corner we probably gained a good almost half a second on him through there now closing in even more as we get into the grass a little bit flying over our hood, our hood as we come into the right hander just trying to hit my marks the best I can I'm, I'm really uh, careful with shifting down into second at road courses in this game because the road course racing uh, with the, the car handling in this game is not very great and it never has been with the 704 games so sometimes downshifting into second gear in certain corners can be really dangerous so I was really careful with doing that now as we get really sideways off the curb hitting the curb but thankfully we held on to it and we ended up losing quite a bit of ground as we come to lap four of five in stage two quite a ways behind Paul Menard at least half a second as we pro approach this right hander as he sits behind the 12 of Ryan Blaney as we get ready to approach the white flag in stage two through the S's once again just trying to hit my marks as best as I can obviously uh, I consider myself to be better at road courses than ovals personally but the white flag is out in stage two now behind the 21 of Paul Menard who sits P8 trying to run down Ryan Blaney in the number 12 as he's having a solid run himself I believe uh, Blaney is comfortably in the playoffs at this time in the season so far as we come out of the hill part the first sector in Sonoma now into the final set of right handers for the final time in stage two as we try to slow down just in time as we overshoot just like we did a little bit in stage one but get a good exit once again as we approach the S's now for the final time in this stage getting up on the right side curbs pretty good now as we come through the right S part of the track now into the left 
handers now as we come into the final right bend closing a little bit on Paul Menard but certainly not going to be enough now as we come into the final hairpin as Suarez and Kyle Busch sit there behind us and battle a little bit as we kind of lock up the right front going into the last corner but we come out of the corner sitting P9 still and we're going to cross the line behind Paul Menard who gets P8 as we cross the line to get P9 in stage 2 so pretty well set up coming into this final stage to maybe make something happen hopefully get a top 5 out of it at least that would be certainly really nice as everyone is pitting Harvick wins the stage gets a playoff point and we are ob obviously are going to also make a pit stop two cans of fuel could easily get us to the end but I decide we're going to do one can of fuel and no tires and we come out in P10 uh, we lose one position so clearly the AI did the same thing as us so hopefully this pays off we're going green this time we could have taken four tires, but we would have been way in the back, so obviously that would have completely ruined our race as the green flag is out. And the final stage is underway in Sonoma alongside the 19 of Daniel Suarez as we come into the first few corners behind the 21 of Palmenar to Suarez. He tries to get over for a brief moment, but we fill that hole up before he can get down in front of me as we clear him out of the first corner. And now as we get into the grass just a little bit as Blaney hangs on to P8 as he gets passed by the 21 of Palmenar. Menard as we now we get alongside the 12 as we come into the right hander making a little bit of contact on him and now we make even more as now we get behind Logano and Menard as we're going to force the three wide up the inside of them into the sharp right hander and gain two extra positions to go up to P6 behind the 43 now of Bubba Wallace who sits in P5 as now Kurt Busch is retaking the lead from Kevin Harvick on this restart so a very good restart for Kurt Busch in position now to maybe get his second win of the season as we come through the S's trying to to run down Bubba Wallace but certainly going to be a tough task as we know I don't know if we necessarily have top five speed right now in the car as Paul Menard uh, closes in on my back bumper and now gets to my inside as we kind of lock up and give him the chance to make a pass on me but we do not allow that to happen as we come through to complete the first lap in the final stage to gain another handful of positions now up to P6 as we restarted in P10 so four spots gained in the uh, first opening lap of the stage as we completely overshoot the first corner and just about get into the grass if we would have gotten in the grass we would have been in big trouble but thankfully we just barely stayed on the curbs and maintained our track position as you can see the 43 of Bubba Wallace driving away at this point as we come to 10 to go you see him and the top other four cars ahead of him just continued to drive away from me at this point and really I just could not run them down and certainly the tire wear was a factor in this the more my tires wear that we know that the AI tires when they pretty much don't wear at all I can be on the same tires as the AI 100 laps in on a run and I'd be way slower than them because their tires don't wear and that was certainly um, showing in this race as you see I'm having a lot of oversteer at this point as the cars ahead of me uh, continue to drive away and we drove away from Paul Menard uh, and the cars behind him but as this run went on they slowly started to gain on me now as we come to just nine laps to go in the final stage of this race just trying to set the best laps I can because I know our tire uh, wear is really affecting me as you see how much oversteer at this point I am having on the exit of the corners through the the center of the corner the car was getting much tighter and even on entrance it was much tighter and on exit we were having quite a bit of oversteer so the car was just not running good at all for me at this point in the race as you can see later this lap the 43 continues to stretch the gap out as I'm just starting to really struggle with this uh, car handling late in this race as uh, Kevin Harvick I believe uh, sits P2 still behind his teammate Kurt Busch who currently leads this race still with just eight laps to go once we hit the line as you can see in my mirror Paul Menard starting to close the gap as we come to just five laps to go now as he continues to get bigger in our mirror and you see up ahead the 43 and everyone else nowhere to be seen pretty much as they continue to drive away as I could still really struggling to keep control of this car as Menard continues to close the gap as we are certainly in trouble you see my left front tire is down to 57 percent so not in good shape now with just six to go as Menard is right there just about as he might be looking within the next lap or two but for the rest of this run I was just 
trying to nail my corners and just hang on to P6 the best I possibly could. Now, as you see, we approach the final hairpin coming to five. Bill Menard takes a look to my inside for the moment, but he's not able to find a chance to get to my inside. So we hang on to the position for a few more laps as we come to just five to go in this race. And as the next few laps went on, as we have just five to go, I was actually able to maintain my position and maintain a solid gap between myself and Paul Menard. It didn't really change that much as we come through the hill part once again as Menard was just not able to get to me now as we come to just three laps to go. The same gap between uh, himself and I as we have just a handful of laps to go in this race trying my best to hang on to P6 as the guys ahead of me are long gone as we get into the grass on the exit of the hill and that's going to allow Paul Menard to close up even more on me as we just cannot get this thing to turn through the entrance in the center of the corner and even on the exit now it's getting really tight as we come to two laps to go you see Menard even closer this time around this time within range to likely be able to make a move as I'm really having to slow down really early in these corners just so I can make the exit of the corner now as we come through the left hander into the right to exit the hill part as Menard is probably about two car lengths or three car lengths behind me as we look into the 90 degree right hand turn as he kind of pulls over to the right letting me know that he is there and ready to make a move as we will just be coming to the white flag this time by as Kurt Busch still leads this race over his teammate Kevin Harvick so he's trying to hang on to get his second victory of the season as Harvick already has two or three victories so he's very comfortable comfortably sitting good with playoff points and whatnot as we only have one and obviously we're not going to add uh, five more because we're sitting in p6 as we approach the white flag as Menard is there with a run now as we come into the final hairpin and Menard's going to send it up the inside big move from the 21 as he door slams me into the final hairpin and I certainly was not a fan of that as we come out of the last corner and through the left hander to take the white flag and I'm going to let him know that I was not a big fan of that as we get into his back bumper on the white flag making sure that we he knows that we are here and we did not appreciate what he did as the white flag is out and he is just going to drive away from me now on this last lap as you can see how much faster he is uh, than me as soon as he got past so I can't really blame him for making the move he did but I certainly uh, was not a fan of how he did it as he just sent it up my inside and uh, door slammed me now as we come through the final uh, handful of corners now into the sharp right hander to come into the last sector of this track getting really loose I was really sending it into these corners as you can tell I was trying to run down the 21 to get him back but I just could not make it happen as we come through the S's for the final time Menard continues to drive away as Blaney now gets close to me coming through the S's for the final time. Menard's put a good about second gap between himself and I through the right bend for the final time as we approach the final corner of this race as Menard is way ahead as we come into the last corner and completely overshoot and lock up the right front tire and go way wide almost into the wall and completely blow the finish as Blaney sneaks by to steal P7 as we approach the line and Blaney's going to get 7th and we're going to hold off Logano to get P8 as we completely blew the ending of that race as uh, I, I don't know why I did that I wasn't even close to Menard and I just went into the last corner and just completely screwed up there as Kurt Busch gets his second victory of the season and we still got P8 so I can't be too um, you know disappointed with that finish because it was a solid top 10 and uh, we're doing everything we need to be doing right now but we just really want to get that first win obviously and hopefully next uh, episode in Chicago maybe we could pull something off and get a victory there as Harvick had the fastest lap with a 110.6 in this race so good for him I guess we come out of here with about seven hundred thousand dollars so that's nothing to complain about two top 15s on the incentive contract is complete in time as we have some messages Top 10, way to go. Thank you, Austin Dillon, for the kind words. Chris Busher, uh, very happy with me. And uh, Jamie McMurray, he was not very happy. He is, we apparently totally took him out in the last race, but in reality, we made a little bit of contact. Uh, Ryan Newman will apolog apologize to him. Uh, just kidding, we're going to provoke him. And now Kyle Busch is very angry, and I could provoke him to make him a rival, or we could play it safe and apologize, and that's what I did. And we're still 
very close to being rivals with him. So we got to be careful with him in the future, obviously. Um, so we got to watch out with Kyle Busch. He's not happy with us, and he hasn't been happy with us pretty much since the beginning of the season. I think it started in Atlanta or Las Vegas. So uh, when we started getting into it with him, so he's not happy, and we got to be careful with that. But that'll do it for this episode. So if you guys enjoyed, make sure to comment, like, subscribe. Those would all be very appreciated. And there's the point standings, and I will see you guys in the next episode for Chicago Land Speedway. So we'll see how we can do at the uh, D-shaped oval mile and a half. So I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I will see you guys next time. Have a good day, everybody.